Hello and welcome to Ember's Reading Room. Today we are going back to the Whisper the Winged Unicorn series. I know it's been a little bit of a gap. A couple reasons, two to be precise. One, there are a bunch of these that I don't actually own. And two, none of them really tie together. So, you no know, real cliffhangers and I don't think there's a huge advantage to hearing them back to back. If you guys change your mind later, maybe we'll string all these together as a playlist. So today we are looking at The Secret of Dark Hollow, starring Whisper the Winged Unicorn. Same illustrator as the last one? Possibly. These books were published two years apart. The first illustrator was Catherine L. Wilson. This one is Catherine Wilson hyphen Heaney. So if she got married, then yes. Hmm. But different author. This one is by Christopher Brown. The first book was by Karen Stiles. Like many children's products, multiple authors, illustrators are used even nowadays. I mean, look at the MLP books. Hmm. Or another very good example is the 39 Clues series. Every book in that series has a different author. The authors do repeat every once in a while, but throughout all of the books... Each one has a different author. So, common tactic continuing today. But for now, The Secret of Dark Hollow, starring Whisper the Winged Unicorn. Deep in Rainbow Forest, there was a secret place of fog and shadow called Dark Hollow. All the forest creatures feared to go there and seldom spoke of it, as though the very name of the place would bring them harm. Dark Hollow, they said was inhabited by an evil beast whose ugliness caused blindness and whose sharp claws closed like a trap on any unsuspecting creature who wandered near. The morgue, as they called this monster, haunted the night. Hmm. The morgue? M-O-R-G. Kind of sounds like the morgue. Yes, as in where they keep all the dead bodies. That's nice. And they're doing that split thing where the text is on one side and the art is on the other. Yes, full page of text, full page of art. Nice art so far. Trees, mushroom, ground. Yeah, but it's very well rendered trees, ground, and mushrooms and grass. Yeah. Yes. Whenever one of the forest residents lost something, or whenever there was some mishap, such as a dead tree falling or a beaver dam washing away, they cried, the morgue did it. If you don't behave, parents told their children, the morgue will get you. While no one could say for sure if the morgue had ever gotten anyone, the threat was very effective. Children always did just as they were told. One morning, Whisper the Winged Unicorn and her friend Dorian the Dragon were walking in the upper meadows of Rainbow Forest. The day was warm and sunny, and it seemed to whisper a good time to ask about the Beast of Dark Hollow. Because it's sunny? I don't know. Also, that sentence seemed to be grammarly wrong almost, but I don't think it was. It just stumbled over itself a little bit. It sounded like... A little. But I think we can forgive the rainbow-maned, gold-horned, white-winged unicorn that is not someone else that we know. Praise the sun. Has anyone ever seen the morgue? asked Whisper. Oh, I don't know, answered Dorian. Some say they have, but everyone describes the morgue differently. No doubt someone was once frightened by a shadow. You know how rumor grows. Each teller improves the story a little out of imagination. Yeah, each person describes the morgue differently. Cold, lots of metal beds, doors that close, very claustrophobic. Don't you believe in the morgue, Dorian? Believe? said Dorian with a swish of his tail. It's not a question of believing. Either there is a morgue, or there isn't. Is and isn't happen to be in bold. Until I know for certain, I'm not saying one way or the other. And again, probably is the same illustrator, because Dorian's color scheme is very much the same and we still have the same pattern of framing the picture yeah i think it is the same illustrator because of whisper on the front matches at least the line style of the whisper from the other one the shape of the face and the way the mane's rendered 
and stuff like that. But she seems, or he seems to be using watercolors in this one for the illustrations compared to ink and paint for the other one. Well, the cover on the first one is not really indicative of the rest of the art. Yeah, but it's still more uh, watercolor on the inside than it is. Also, with the hyphenated last name and the first name being Catherine, I would assume that the artist is female. I try not to assume. Well, for the time period. As Whisper thought about what Dorian had said, the dragon chuckled. Why are you suddenly so interested in the morgue, Whisper? It disturbs me to think there might be something evil lurking in Rainbow Forest. There is evil lurking everywhere, said Dorian. But if you let fear of the unknown overcome you, you'll spoil your enjoyment of life. I've always found that the best way to deal with fear is to face up to it. Do you think I should face up to the morgue? asked Whisper. That, my friend, said Dorian, must be your decision. Hmm. You know, if you interpret this, especially with the use of that particular word, at least the way it sounds, you could almost say that this book so far is talking about death. You entirely could. Also, I think I shifted voices a little bit on Dorian. Sorry about that. It's all right. <sighs> Soon, Whisper and Dorian came to a hollow log. Out of one end popped their friend Bixby, the rabbit. I thought I heard you two talking, said Bixby. What's new? Have you ever seen the morgue? asked Whisper. Bixby looked alarmed. Shush, he hissed. Not so loud. You never know where the morgue might be hiding. Bixby leaned close to Whisper's ear. As a rabbit, I would think that might be slightly difficult unless she put her head down. Which I think she is, based on the illustration. Yes, but she also looks a bit further away. Yes, I've seen him. And a huge, ugly thing he is, too. One night I was nearly asleep when I heard the sound of slow footsteps. I peeked out of my log, and there he was. A gigantic shadow across the moon. When did this happen? asked Dorian. Three nights ago, answered Bixby. Three nights ago, said Dorian. I couldn't sleep, so I took a walk. I came this way. You saw me, Bixby. Yes, because the dragon is easily mistakable for the mysterious morgue. Uh, well, depending on the eyesight of that particular bunny at night. Also, if Dorian was in front of the moon and the moon was full, you would only see a silhouette. Yes, but you would think he could recognize the silhouette of the only dragon that we know of living in Rainbow Forest. Good point. No, no, insisted Bixby. It wasn't you, Dorian, I'm sure. This evil beast was very tall, had a long tail, and horrid, gleaming claws. <laughs> Dorian shook his head. That describes me perfectly, Bixby. You just want to believe the worst. It's more exciting. Oh, that bunny does look excited in that picture. Uh, very animated. You're wrong, Dorian. Ask Tommy Turtle. Ask the Beaver family. They saw it too. I tell you, the morgue creeps around at night looking for nasty worms and snails to eat. Actually, those are delicacies. Well, not the worms, but the snails. Bixby was trembling so hard, one foot thump, thump, thumped on the ground. That does it, said Whisper suddenly. I'm going to fly into Dark Hollow to find out about this morgue. If there really is a morgue, I'm going to tell him to leave Rainbow Forest alone. With that, Whisper launched herself into the air. Because remember, she's not afraid to fly anymore. Rainbow Forest was vast, but Whisper's silky wings soon carried her into the deep interior. As she approached Dark Hollow, she felt her heart pounding harder and harder. The idea of coming face to face with the morgue frightened her, but she had made a bold statement in front of Bixby and Dorian. She had to see it through or look very silly indeed. Also goes back to think before you speak. Or leap. Circling low over the trees, Whisper saw a bank of fog rising ahead of her. Dark hollow. No matter how horrible this creature is, Whisper told herself as she glided into the fog, I have to see it. I have to rid the forest of such an evil. Well, she is a unicorn. Mm. Suddenly out of the fog, a great cliff appeared right in Whisper's path. She swerved to avoid it, but as she did so, a gnarled tree branch seemed to reach out and snag her legs. With a splintering crash, Whisper fell into the treetop and hung there, gasping for breath. 
with a splintering crash, huh? It's almost like they were going to describe that her leg got broken, but decided, no, we can't have that. No. And this picture doesn't look very crashy. This looks more like she's leaping. Yeah. Nice artwork, though. Mm-hmm. And both based on this picture and the front cover, I think they decided that she needed some flank dappling. Hmm. The first one didn't have that. Well, the series has variations throughout it, especially with changing authors and artists. Mm-hmm. But if we are correct and this is the same artist, it's been two years. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's certainly crashed in that picture. Yeah, that that's much more crashed. Well, my dear, said a soft voice, that was a rather hasty landing. Are you hurt? No, stammered Whisper. I don't think so. Leaves and twigs were tangled in her wings. Looking down, she saw a small figure hazily outlined in the fog. Who are you? My name is Phineas. I live in that cave yonder. May I climb up to help you? No, thank you, answered Whisper. I'll just get my legs free and float down. As Whisper struggled, poor Phineas was showered with twigs and leaves. In a moment, however, Whisper had untangled herself. She settled lightly to the ground beside the strange little figure of Phineas. I'm sorry, said Whisper. I'm not usually so clumsy. I know, agreed Phineas. I've seen you flying overhead many a day. You are truly magnificent. Is it just me or do her hooves look a little red in this shot? They look more orange to me. Reddish orange. Kind of like one of those reddish tangerines. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Yeah, because what Phineas is wearing is more red. But they're, they're not the gold of the previous page. Is so far, that and the cover are the only pages where we can see her hooves. The rest of the time, they're covered by her fetlocks. Uh, fetlocks. Feathers? I think it's feathering when it's over the hooves. I think it is fetlocks, because that's the tag I've seen used on some of the pony sites. Whisper looked Phineas up and down. He was a skinny, elf-like creature with big eyes and big feet. Resting upon his crooked nose was a pair of spectacles. Okay, so elf-like. That implies that there are elves living in Rainbow Forest. Otherwise, how does Whisper know such a thing? I would have said more gnome. Because he's so short and all, and the ears aren't pointy. Mm-hmm. I'm very much surprised to find anyone in Dark Hollow, said Whisper. This is a dangerous place. Phineas chuckled. Not at all, he replied. It's a lovely, peaceful place, if you don't mind the fog. It's really steam, you see, from underground hot springs. My cave is always toasty warm, and I love a hot bath. Again, children's book and bathing. Yep. Though this is just a aside. But what do you do here? Whisper asked. I am a scholar, answered Phineas. My cave is full of books and scrolls. I study the lore of my people, the Nodkins. We lived in Rainbow Forest for many centuries. We helped protect this country during the troll invasions long ago. The trolls were driven away, but my people were scattered. Only I remain. How scattered and how long ago? Was he part of this helping, or...? Also the classic only survivor? Mm-hmm. Well, Whisper seems to be the only unicorn. Dorian's the only dragon. So now Phineas is the only Nodkin. Don't you ever get lonely? Whisper asked. Not with my books to keep me company, answered Phineas with a smile. Hmm. 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 Wonder who that could be. <laughs> yes, I think Phineas and I would get along rather well. I'm very old, and only occasionally do I venture out of Dark Hollow to stretch my legs. To be honest, I rather like my solitude. The youngsters of the forest and I have little in common these days. But, but what about the morgue? exclaimed Whisper, remembering why she had come. Isn't it dangerous to live so near the beast? Phineas bent double with laughter. The morgue? A beast? Oh, that's funny. Imagination without information creates marvelous nonsense. Come, Whisper, I'll show you your evil morgue. Phineas led the way, still laughing, toward his cave. And now we find out the truth and some wonderful art. <laughs> yes, nice falling leaves, another bird. More mushrooms. Some berries. 
the entrance to the cave was like the yawning mouth of a whale. Who has whisper seen a whale? Also, that's really big. Yes. For such a small fellow as the Nodkin is supposed to be. Whisper hesitated, but Phineas patted her on the shoulder to urge her inside. Come, there's nothing to fear. This is my library, continued Phineas. Shelf after shelf of books stretched back into the cave. There were toadstool-like chairs and tables made of stone slabs. On one table stood a stack of paper, an ink bottle, and several quill pens. I'm writing the history of Rainbow Forest, said Phineas. It is a long task. I haven't much time to visit other people. I, I don't know anything about writing, said Whisper. Unicorns have no written language. As far as she knows. Being the only unicorn in Rainbow Forest. Also, apparently she's aware of writing. So, who else in Rainbow Forest writes? Hmm, good question. A pity, said Phineas. To be familiar with your world, you should learn to read. Otherwise, you have only your experiences and miss out on the knowledge others leave in writing. If you'd like, I could teach you to read. Wasn't it writing that she talked about? Yeah, unicorns have no written language. I could teach you to read. Um? Yeah. Just because she doesn't know anything about writing doesn't automatically mean she cannot read. Because it is possible to be able to read without knowing how to write. And I think they're working on a bigger picture here. Yep. Nice picture. All those books. Yep. Yes, I'd like to learn to read, answered Whisper. But what about the morgue? asked Phineas. Whisper nodded. Phineas took down a pointed hat from a shelf, placed it on his head, and bowed. I am the morgue, he said in deep tones. Whisper backed up a step, trembling. Phineas pointed to some ancient runes painted on the hat. These markings identify my role as a morgue. A scholar, an historian, yes it says an, not a, of the Nodkins. A morgue is certainly no monster, unless you think a keeper of knowledge is something to be feared. Hmm. Also, I love how the font isn't curved to match the hat. It's just kind of pasted on there and adjusted in such a way that it kind of gets clipped off. They didn't really take a lot of time to distort it. So I don't know if they could when this book was printed. They may not have been able to. Also, it might have been a last second edition. The author and the illustrator may not have been on the same page here. So the picture could have been drawn, and then, no, the text specifically says that these letters are on the hat. Except it's interesting how these ancient runes look exactly like English. Yeah. But why is everyone scared of you? asked Whisper, greatly relieved. One always fears what one doesn't understand. I keep to myself, preferring my solitude to the activity of Rainbow Forest. No one knows much about me, so they assume I'm evil. Ignorance creates fear whisper and foolishness. An ignorant person will believe anything. I'm sure there are some silly stories going around about me. Though from what I understand, smart people are also some of the easiest fooled as well. Mainly because they're convinced they can't be. Yes, there are, said Whisper. Well, perhaps it is time I went down to visit the forest creatures, Phineas said. I need a holiday from my work. Maybe we can show your friends I'm not so dangerous. It's a long way to walk from Dark Hollow, noted Whisper. You could ride on my back while I fly. That would be a grand entrance for you. Phineas laughed. Do you promise not to crash into the trees again? I promise, said Whisper, bowing low for Phineas to climb on. The end. It actually says the end. Interesting place to end it. Mm-hmm. I thought they at least would go back to the forest and show him being introduced to the forest creatures. No, apparently this is good enough because this is all about Whisper the Winged Unicorn. So if Whisper's convinced, then everyone else is going to be convinced. Collect the books and trade the stickers. Yeah, but if you get all the same books, there's no point in trading because you'll all have the same stickers. Good point. Also, some of these came with bookmarks instead of stickers. Oops. <laughs> well, they may not have at the time this particular one was published. We're perusing the back cover. 
since you can't actually see what we're up to. So yeah, I think these middle two I don't have because it, it lists uh, four different books from the Whisper of the Winged Unicorn series. So I have Whisper of the Winged Unicorn, which we read previously, A Wish for Whisper, pretty sure I don't have that one, Whisper's Mysterious Adventure, no I don't have that one, and The Secret of Dark Hollow, which we just finished. Mm-hmm. Speaking of which, what did you think? It was fun. It's much, even though there are issues with the storyline, I think it plays out a lot better in dealing with fear than the first book and Whisper's Fear of Flying. Hmm. She's going to face something that is frightening, and she learns that, oh, a lot of fear comes from not knowing. Here are ways that you can learn and know things. Yeah, it took me forever to figure that out, that what I was actually afraid of was the unknown, because when I was younger, I was scared of the dark. And I got over my fear of the dark by realizing, oh, it's not the dark I'm scared of, it's what may be in the dark that I'm scared of. Well, your dark can have theoretically contained mountain lions at the time, so... Mountain lions, bears, other creatures, oh my. Mm -hmm. I had them as backyard neighbors. Mm -hmm. It was wonderful. And this has been The Secret of Dark Hollow, starring Whisper the Winged Unicorn, by Christopher Brown, illustrated by Catherine Wilson Heaney. Thank you for listening. If you enjoyed this, please check out other Ember's Reading Room entries. You can find the first Whisper video as well if you missed it. If you're interested in picking up a copy of this book, please look below for an Amazon link. We'll try to get one if it's still in print. If you feel like shopping for anything else, we also have a link for the shopping rebate site Ebates. Amazon and Ebates are not sponsors of or in any way affiliated with Ember's Reading Room or any content of the Lux Analysis channel.